How deep do your prospective clients have to go to find you on the web? When they do find you, what do they find? SEO. Internet marketing strategy. Bounce rates. Website performance. Cost per click. And social media. Conversion rates. This is Edge of the Edge Web of the web. with Aaron Sparks. Welcome to Edge of the Web Radio with Aaron Sparks and John Thompson from Site Strategic. Say hi, John. Hey. How are we doing today? Good. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for joining Edge of the Web Radio. We are a, uh, Site Strategic is a local Indianapolis company that uh, provides website services and internet marketing services. John, tell us a little bit about what we do. Yeah, we provide SEO consulting, uh, social media, and web design services. We basically work with small businesses to create a strategy for online success. And that entails PPC campaigns, websites, uh, social media, all the cylinders that we need to hit to get you at the top of Google and organic search. That's right. That's right. And so what we've done is put together a radio show. We were wanting to get the kind of the... Uh, education out into uh, the local Indianapolis network uh, or businesses as, as well as uh, putting together a program that we can broadcast out on YouTube, on podcast, and uh, really give you a bank of information that you can go back and research again and again and, and uh, be able to just live the level of dialogue about these particular uh, issues, right? That's right. Um. We are, we got a lot of things running today. That we've got a packed program, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the different areas in which we're broadcasting. We uh, if you're if you're on Twitter, you actually can find our uh, our chat hashtag channel that you can actually talk into and and uh, ask questions while we're live on program. That's uh, the Edge Talk. That's hashtag Edge Talk. So if you can search uh, Twitter, you can find that, and it's uh, it's right out there. We're also broadcasting today. Uh, Ustream. Uh, if you go to Ustream TV dot uh, tv forward slash channel forward slash site strategics you can actually see us as we're broadcasting live um maybe upside down maybe not i don't know <laughs> uh, we also have podcasts out that are available very very quickly after the show on edge of the web radio.com and we also put together the transcripts of all these shows uh so you can access and really kind of go bullet by bullet uh, about the different topics that we talk about. On top of that, the following Friday after these shows, we are doing YouTube Friday, so the edge is is right there and, and waiting for you, and we break up the segments uh, and actually spice up the, the video with some screenshots and information uh, that goes right along with what we're talking about, so it can be more illustrative and uh, you can really understand what we're, what we're uh, uh, commenting about throughout the show. John, what did we do last show? What did we talk about? Well, uh, just to be brief, we talked about PPC, pay-per-click. We talked about AdWords and uh, what kind of keywords you were wanting to go after, Mm -hmm. landing pages of your website and how to critique those landing pages. We're going to talk more about that in this show. And... uh, well, we covered content marketing. We content I think content we also marketing. covered conversions, if I'm not mistaken. We uh, we covered how to how to track conversions. On top of that, how you know, what conversions on your site really mean, um, and and you can go back and, and listen to those. We wanted to move forward. We're actually going to talk a little bit more in de- uh, in detail about conversions today. Um, to start everything, if you haven't joined us before, you haven't heard what we're talking about, we are talking about inbound marketing, and we use the analogy of an eight-cylinder Hemi, right? Mm-hmm. That that uh, Give us some of those cylinders of that Hemi. Yeah. Uh, eight cylinders. Mm-hmm. we got social media marketing, or yep. also known as SMM. Yep. Email marketing, lead generation, organic search marketing, conversion rate optimization, analytics, and paid search marketing, pay PC, and content marketing. All, right. all those things, you may or may not know those particular terms. But they all revolve around how to lift exposure of your website, of your brand, and on top of that, be able to measure the results. And, and that's what we're trying to really get across is you can, you can broadcast out there, but you have to be able to see how, uh, what's happening on your, on your website in order to improve that's right. uh, th- those standings or, or the, the positions that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, now, something new that we we are also going to introduce. We're kind of changing up the program format a little bit, and we're going to talk a little bit later about this. But we're actually going doing something really cool uh, 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 for the next four or five shows, and, and we're going to leave you hanging here for a minute. But we are going to keep on talking about the cylinders. But first, we want to start off with uh, news on the internet. That's right. That's right. Um, 
we've got several different articles we want to talk about, and there's some very, very pressing information. And uh, just recently, um, one of the the uh, most inter- uh, most interesting and, and and topical points of, of, of news this week was the CISPA Act uh, that has been uh, approved by the House of House of Representatives this week on the I think the 27th of this uh, this week, April 27th. There were um, there was a uh, act uh, approved, which is the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Okay, and that is uh, it's uh, if you're familiar with SOPA, uh, SOPA was an act that was being discussed and, uh, and focused on websites that were outside the U.S. And it was a uh, focus on cyber terrorism to be able to cultivate information, user accounts, and what have you, to be able to, to see what's going on uh, that may be uh, a dire effect towards the, uh, the, the U.S. Now, CISPA is in place and has been passed, uh, or at least preliminar- preliminarily, uh, uh, with a vote of 20, uh, 248 to 168, um, that is a, a internal focus of of uh, cyber terrorism, and there's a lot talking a lot talking about this this particular act. Um, a Democrat, a, a representative, representative Jared Polis, a, a Colorado Democrat, uh, was quoted to say, "This weighs every single privacy law ever enacted in the name of cybersecurity." That's pretty dramatic. Whenever you think about what this what this bill is actually meant to do. The CISPA Act does not formally grant the NSA or Home Sec- Homeland Security any additional surveillance authority. Um, it basically ra- is, a, is an instance of new information. It's a new information age between companies and government agencies. Government uh, com- companies are not forced. There's no formal forcing of any kind uh, for companies, network providers, ISPs, what have you, to provide or, or, or reveal private information it's it's literally a a a a step towards understanding that different networks and different companies have um individual security policies from being hacked from the outside internet world yeah i I remember you explaining to me uh, you touched a little bit today when you were telling me about china and it being such a threat Am, am i right that's right absolutely and in fact there's there's some some pretty good information about about that in, in the last few years, nations like China have stolen enough intellectual property from just defense contractors, mind you, that would be the equivalent of 50 times the print collection of the U.S. Library of Congress. Wow. In the last few years, okay? We have nation states who are literally stealing jobs in our future. Uh, we also have countries that are engaged in activities and have capabilities that have the ability to break networks, computer networks, which means that you just can't reboot. Right. Okay. That means that the systems can be literally broken, and those kind of disruptions can be catastrophic when you think of the financial sector or the energy sector or, or you know, command and control elements of the national security apparatus. So, I mean... So this, I, this is a good thing. It's a good thing because, I mean, uh, uh, now there's... there's there's a huge, uh, a huge group of, of people that in organizations that oppose this, the American Library Association, the ACLU, Libertarian Leaning uh, Tech Freedom. I mean, they make some arguments. I mean, I'm, I'm always a proponent of, of, of privacy laws, okay? Mm-hmm. But, but what this does is it's actually introducing a bill to help negotiate between companies and the government to be able to, 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 to uh, protect these organizations um, a little bit stronger and be able to give uh, reinforcement to private security of, of organizations. Read more about it. We have a link to these articles online. It's That's a very, right. very, very important topic, um, and you need to be aware of, of how this actually affects you. you yep. know? Find those links at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's right. That's right. Um, moving on. Uh, we've got another article that was from, uh, I think, uh, April 13th. Uh, it was on Search Engine Watch. Uh, 13 website social optimization oversights that you may, that may, may look, may make you look foolish. Now, it's a cool, uh, article. It's a pretty long article. I'm not going to go through all 13. But since we're talking about social media marketing, you really need to know what you need to do for your website in order to make it easy for users to be able to share that content. Um, if, people, if people are reading your blogs and you have missing or excessive social sharing buttons, yeah, it makes you look a little bit foolish. You know, if, you, if you've got too many buttons, on, I mean, it's a glorious tab of, of 25 <laughs> 
share share yeah. buttons on your article, it's a little, little bit of an overkill. Well, and I think if you're not for people that aren't knowing what that is, it's it's usually that floating thing on the left or right side. And I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know if these webmasters or, or website developers understand this, but it makes your page load ungodly slow Absolutely. if you have a, a whole bunch of sharing things. And, and a lot of these times, these these tools actually link to that that source website. Right. So all of a sudden, you're having to load those website scripts sometimes mm-hmm. to be able to get the entire page to render. You know, if you require comments, if, if you have comments on a, a comment field on the page, but you require an actual account creation mm-hmm. to, get, to post that comment, no, not too good. You're not really being that helpful for somebody who's quickly browsing your website. If, there, if you have missing bylines about the author or even the date of the article, it, you need to do some housekeeping because the users want to know how fresh, how up to date that particular article is. You know, missing or irre- irrelevant image thumbnails uh, for sharing the page. Okay, if you're reading about something and you've got a a cat with mittens, that's great for Pinterest. <laughs> but if you're talking about the CISPA article, I think you got a disconnect there, right? And Maybe. on top of that, whenever you <laughs> China a Chinese cat with mittens. <laughs> Whenever you have that, the, these images on these pages, whenever you go to share something, that image comes along as a thumbnail. And if, if that's, it's irrelevant, you're not going to have that much uh, uh, interest when somebody shares that article. Right. You know, if the sharing button is not fully configured, uh, that's also something. So there's a lot of other uh, uh, bullet points there. Uh, for example, social accounts that all look alike. There's no visible comment form or maybe a super long page title. Those are some of the things that you just need to take care of whenever you're uh, you're uh, working on your, your 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 blog. All right, another article: Foursquare ads. Talk to me about Foursquare ads, John. Oh, I love Foursquare. I know you do. Um, you know, I was just telling you about that trending topic. It tells you where the people are checking in the most around the city, That's and right. you can kind of see what's popular. But no, they're. Foursquare around June is going to be promoting a deal, um, giving other businesses the um, advertising space based on where people check in at. So if you check in at Walgreens and a mm-hmm. bunch of drugstores, uh, I say that because Walgreens actually worked with Foursquare and providing right. a discount if people checked in at um, the stores. Um, you're going to be able to promote your own business on there and and uh, work with basically – it's kind of a recommendations engine that mm-hmm. Amazon has for books that they're selling. So look for that in June. That's right. right. It's going to be really cool is that it uses the same algorithm as the Explorer so you can – it actually can provide you information based on your own past check-ins. Just like uh, if you're you know, you're at the grocery store and you've got a number you – know, whenever your receipt prints out, you've got a right. number of coupons that are reflective of your purchasing habits, mm-hmm. uh, the ad engine on Foursquare is going to – Direct ads that are part of your interest level. That and it's really you know data that that they're be able to, they're able to actually watch uh, through your check your check in and check out procedure, but also your users, uh, your other friends and other user base. So mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a pretty cool thing. I think it's going to take off. Foursquare's got twenty million active users right now. Um, that's that's a pretty strong uh, build up, and they have, have been kind of low key on the on the on the social front. I mean, you've got. Pinterest out there that is just exploding, right. but they have a regular steady growth, you know? Yeah, I think what you're looking at is is getting that niche, uh, those niche pe- people, and, you know, in light of that, we talked about Instagram before. I believe Instagram just got bought out by Facebook for $1 billion because Twitter was actually eyeballing Instagram right. and drove up the price that Facebook had because, you know, it's that, that niche market people are using for those services. That's but, right. Pretty cool. That's right. Well... We got a, a big news item coming up here, and it is about the Google update. I tell you what, this week has been incredible. Things have shifted all over the place with Google, and we want to tell you a lot about that. So we're actually opening up an entire segment just for the Google update. We'll catch you right back. You're listening to 1430 WXNT. This is Edge of the Web. Edge of the Web.